Hello everybody, welcome to another Pioneer video. Today we're going to be messing around with Odric Lunark Marshall, which is one of the most underrated cards in my opinion. I've had a lot of success with this Odric and the other one in Commander. I think both of the Odrics are great in Commander. So I think if they're great in Commander and I've had a lot of success with them there, then maybe they would be pretty decent in Pioneer. Now you couldn't really try four drops that you're quite fond of in Modern because the power curve in Modern is a lot cheaper, it's like two to three. Whereas in Pioneer, a more casual version of Modern, it's like three to five. So thank goodness for the Pioneer format, we can finally try some new fun stuff like Odric Lunark Marshall. So he can do some pretty nutty things. Hopefully we can show that off in today's video. So let's get right to it. Let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. I would like to welcome you guys to the brand new TCG Player Infinite. When you sign up, you get 3% store credit back on all orders, as well as fast and free shipping for only $6.99 a month. So if you're somebody who likes to buy magic cards on a regular basis, this is definitely the service for you. And you can get early access today by using the code MarinMTG. You can find the link in the description box down below, or go to infinite.tcgplayer.com. We are promoting this for the month of November, and our goal was to get 100 people to sign up by the end of the month. It is currently November 19th, and we have six people so far. So thank you very much to everybody who chose to sign up. We have just over a week left to go. Let's give it our all and see how close we can get. I am predicting today's deck to do pretty well, because besides the Odric plan, it's just literally Boros pile aggro. And you know, aggro decks are capable of sneaking out wins regardless of the scenario. So I'm predicting a pretty good record. Let's check out the deck and see how it does. Starting right off with Odric Lunark Marshall. Now he is four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. This says at the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. The same is true for all these different kinds of abilities. So we just want to play him and give all our creatures insane abilities based on the other creatures we have. So let's jump right into the most insane things that we want to pair with him. So starting off with Swift Blade Vindicator, it's two mana for a 1-1, one, one, double strike vigilance lifelink. And then we got Aerial Responder with Flying Vigilance Lifelink and then Gideon that has Indestructible Vigilance and Lifelink. So when we go to combat, Odric is going to give our creatures all of the abilities based on what abilities any of our creatures have. So for example, if we have Aerial Responder out, all of our creatures are going to gain Flying Vigilance and Lifelink. So it's going to be really insane once we just drop that Odric and go right to combat. Stuff is going to get wild. So let's move on to the more cheaper end of the... The stuff that's still pretty good with Odric, but not as insane. Healer's Hawk will give all of our dudes Flying and Lifelink. Fervin Champion will give all of our dudes First Strike and Haste. Now, I kind of like Fervin Champion with Odric because when you go to combat, Odric himself will gain Haste and First Strike, so he can get in right away. So that's pretty nice right there. And that, that Flying and Lifelink is definitely useful. Kind of just like Aerial Responder, but in a smaller package. Um, but Aerial Spawner is pretty cool because it can just start beating down on its own and just start being a good Boros Agro creature. Now onto the topper end of the uh, secondary good stuff. Tajik Legion's End is just a really good aggro card on its own. Can really help us win without Odric. Um, he can give us Haste and First Strike. He can provide those two abilities for the creatures when Odric is out. Aurelia Exemplar of Justice is a pretty nice one as well. It's a uh, more backup top end to Odric because we didn't want to go with a play set of Odrics or like too heavy on that because, you know, they, they can get redundant at times. So Aurelia is just like a backup like top end. Um, but it also, if we happen to have Odric and Aurelia together, Aurelia can give Flying, Trample, and Vigilance, which is pretty nice if we target a red and white creature. And also she's got Mentor and she's just like a fat flyer on her own, so she can also just like be a backup win con. Now, onto the rest of the package. This, this was our vehicle package that didn't have any particular abilities on it besides Smuggler's Copter's flying, but Veteran Motorist and Smuggler's Copter are aggressive dudes that also help us find Odric because Veteran Motorist scries two when it enters, and it can also, when it crews vehicle, that vehicle gets plus one, plus one. So if it crews a Smuggler's Copter, it's gonna be a four, four. Now Smuggler's Copter provides flying when we have Odric out, but at the same time, it's also just a looter scooter as we all call it, and it can help loot us into Odric or some good stuff and we actually do have a pretty decent amount of lands for an aggro deck because of our top end curve so smuggler's copter can help loot away redundant lands as well and then on to our removal we have a play set of lightning strike i wanted some kind of removal and you know wild slash slash shock was an option but i felt like i wanted a little bit more damage because we are kind of an aggro deck that's not super cheap and all in 
but we're a little bit more mid-rangey aggro, so I felt like a little bit of a bigger removal spell would be better. Declaration in Stone was also an option, but I wanted some direct burn just in case we're in a racing situation and we got to finish off our opponent. We have a total of 23 lands. Now, yes, I did say that sounds like a bunch, um, but we have Looter Scooter to help us loot some stuff away and Veteran Motors to scribe past lands we don't need. But I just wanted to get up to Odric slash Aurelia on curve because they do cost four mana and I do have a good amount of three drops as well. So I think that 23 is justified. Moving on to the sideboard, we got three copies of Authority of the Consoles. This is for anti-burn, makes her stuff enter tapped and we're gonna gain life when they enter. So good against burn. Then we have one copy of Assembled Legion. This is a nice grindy win con again against any control slash mid-range deck that's trying to just like go super long to like turn 10 slash 15 and uh that's just going to generate us a huge board state and then we got two copies of deafening silence against any deck that's trying to cantrip a bunch uh so pretty much the blue red prowess decks or like any anything that's trying to combo and we got two copies of damping sphere again against things that are trying to combo i'm actually probably going to replace this uh, you'll probably see it on the screen right now if I do replace it, um, because uh, this was in here for Monogreed Devotion, but that deck actually actually got nerfed. So I don't think people are really going to play it much anymore, but it's pretty good against Nykthos and Nyssa. Um, but it may be replaceable, so you can replace it with anything you want, really. And then we got two copies of Rest in Peace. This is for um, the God Pharaoh's Gifts decks mainly. There is other graveyard decks, but mainly God Pharaoh's Gift is the most threatening one. Then we got two copies of Chandra Torture Defiance, again, to pair along with Assemble the Legion as another grindy piece um, for, you know, mid-range and control. That resolves and you're going to have a good time. And then we got three copies of Declaration in Stone as additional removal. Um, but Lightning Strike in our main board is burn, so if your, our opponent has really huge creatures and three damage won't kill them, uh, Deafening Silence is in there for the fatties. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. Really quick before we get into the gameplay, it is time to welcome some brand new patrons to the family. So thank you very much, Steven Haas, for your tier two pledge, and thank you, TCG Magikarp, for your tier three pledge. I really appreciate it, guys. Welcome to the marination. With that, let's get right into the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against you soon. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some Boros Odric aggro from Pioneer. And we're going to keep that in hand. Got a one drop into a two drop. It's not to like about that when you're playing an aggro deck. Veteran Motors can scry us into our third land, which can get us down Tajik. And that's super aggressive right there. But if I do just top deck a land, I'm definitely slamming Swiftblade instead. Because that into Tajik is much better. All right, so it looks like Mono Green Devotion so far. All right, we drew the land, so instead let's get out the uh, Swift Blade Vindicator. Let's try to aggro them out before they can do their big stuff. Eldraine and War have been some very problematic sets. Yeah, true. There's been a lot of cards. It's just like people are like, ban this. All right, Steel Leaf is pretty good. So I guess that means that I can't Tajik here because then they can block. But it does let me pump up the Swift Blade, which is not terrible. That's not bad. Not bad. But like, they would just eat my Tajik. Basically, I'd be doing like shock myself to put a 1-1 counter on Swift Blade, which is not that good. All right, I don't think I'm gonna do that. So let's just play a uh, veteran motorist. Let's scry a little bit, see if we can get some goodies. All right, planes to the top, fervent champion to the bottom. Sacred Foundry tapped and go in with the healer's hawk. And now this Aurelia can start doing work and giving this healer's hawk a little bit of a pump. I can also give a pump to Swift Blade and just get him for a lot, a lot, a lot. 
Shaper Sanctuary. Solid sideboard card. So this person has probably went up against control way too many times. He's like, screw it, I'm mainboarding this. Because he probably brought it in every game. Alright, the opponent didn't hit their land drop, and we get to get out Aurelia here. And let's actually pump this Swift Blade Vindicator and hope they don't kill it. Come on, no lightning strike, no wild slash. We should have this one. All right, they're taking it all. We go up to 16, they go down to eight. And we definitely have lethal in many different ways next turn. Also with that hasty Tajik as well. Feels good, man. And I can also double Mentor onto the Swift Blade Vindicator. Me new hard drive, 50 gigabytes to download the new Star Wars game. That new Star Wars game is so cool. It's, it's like Dark Souls. It's literally just Dark Souls. And it's such a shame that a lot of people are not going to know about it because like, oh, Star Wars game, who cares? And they're not going to like ever look at it. But it's literally Dark Souls. And it's so cool. All right, opponent doesn't have it. Move on to sideboarding. Uh, Chandra can blast some things pretty good here, and um, definitely want Declaration and Stones. Um, and let's cut a Fervent Champion, two Veteran Motorists, and another... Let's just cut all the Fervent Champions. And run it like that. A Pump Swift Blade is a scary card. Yeah, super scary. Ooh. Deck and stone in hand. And then Swift Blade in a Tajik, our nut draw. Keep that. So let's hope they don't have their turn two Steel Leaf, because that would be very scary. No turn one play, that's good too. Two drops. Sir Fen. All right, let's just get out Swift Blade here. Hopefully, they just play something that can trade with Tajik because I'll just suicide anything into their board right now. So that tells me they definitely got pump spells. Bark Hide Troll. All right, well, they can definitely just like blossoming defense to like eat the Tajik, but that's probably fine. Oh, we got an Odric. Hold on. Hold on. I can go Aerial Spawner into Odric, and then everything will get Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample. Yeah. Do that. Bound Crag. All right, what scary four drop you got? Or are you just going to commit all your aspects of Hydra to your Surf Fen right now? So if they attack with Farron, they obviously have a uh, pump spell. Yeah, they obviously have a pump spell. I'm just going to take it for now, though. Because I don't think I'm dying this turn. And I want to get down this Odric and get in with a swing. And then following up after the Odric, hopefully I can go Veteran Motors Tajik and just get him for all the Flying Double Strike Vigilance Lifelink damage. That'd be the nuts. Alright, I'll take the swing. And they pass a turn. So they're probably holding up a removal spell. Or just one of those Night, night Pack Wolf Embusher things. All right, I gain a little bit back up to 17, and they're down to 14. They didn't flash in a wolf, so I don't know what they're doing. A five mana now, you got a Ronos? You got a Ronos, that's fine. And I also got my land, so now I can go this plus this and just swing lethal.
and all my stuff gets double strike flying trample vigilance again so i can just block a whole lot of stuff on sir farin so my only problem here is if they have like triple aspect hydra like mega screwed All right, so Aspect of Hydra gives plus four, plus four. Another one gives plus eight, plus eight. So, like, I literally could block just everything on Sir Farron right now. And that would likely kill it. They have two cards left. So, if they have double Aspect, that's plus eight. That's ten. That's, yeah, that's not enough. And they scoop it up. Yeah, they're not going to beat that. I didn't get to live the Nut Dodge or even do what I wanted to do next turn, but still. I will take that concession. Sure. Got a game here against Casey Divine, and yes, we're going to be in the play with some Pioneer Boros Odric Aggro. And we're going to keep that. That looks good. Motors and a Gideon protect it with Lightning Strike. You really enjoy the latest vid. Super fun looking combo. Thank you, the dude 94 Good to see you again. Play Tooth and Nail combo because of him? Because of who? Oh, oh, because of Kevin. Oh yeah, dude, I have... Kevin is one of the OG MTG content creators. Been a buddy of mine for a long time, since when he was at, like, nothing. I think he's still... yeah. Still... Still my friend. I should collab with him again. Veteran motorist. Down. Alright, uh... Well, Swift Blade would be good if we had Odric, but I'd rather find Odric first. So let's just bottom both. Although, you know, it might have been okay to keep that, that Swift Blade, because on turn... The turn after I play Gideon, I'll have four mana, and I can go two, two drops, so... Maybe I should have kept it. They cycled a cast out. Killing Forest, so maybe they're just Enchantress. Oh yeah, definitely Enchantress. Ooh, there's the Odric. So now I wish I kept the Swift Blade Vindicator. Now if they got the uh, Sphere Safety, I'm a little screwed. Maybe just a little, but Gideon can blow that up. So it's not the worst thing in the world. Alright, let's get some lifelink in there. Opponent blocks it. They're gonna gain one back into 21. Temple Garden tapped. So do you have one of those cheapeners? Ooh, smuggler's copter. Give flying to everything. I like it. So I think I want to do that. F I think I want to go Copter plus Motorist first. Because Odric's better to follow up with after I already have all the abilities on board. So yeah, let's just tick up here. I have a feeling they got Seal Away. But I'm still just going to give Lifelink anyways. Let's see if they got a Seal Away. I'm pretty sure they got a Seal Away. Yo, what's up, Dan? It's the Marin Mune. Blocks the Gids, so they don't have it. Alright, veteran motorist, look for that Swift Blade Vindicator. Those are not Swift Blade Vindicators, so let's bottom them. Play a copter, and the next turn Odric's gonna get flying to everything. Flying death touch or flying vigilance indestructible lifelink. Gains one with ram back up to 19. They're gonna ride this dodge ram to victory. So they're still a mana away from Sphere of Safety. 
So not too worried about it yet. And even if it comes down, Gideon can minus six on it. Exile target non-land permanent, which is pretty good. Jock's Temple Garden. Got Eidolon. They do got the Eidolon, which I can blow up. Ooh, Fervent Champion to give haste too. Um, do I want to just kill that Eidolon now with Lightning Strike and just play a Fervent Champion crew up and start swinging? Probably do. I probably don't want them drawing cards. What if I do play Odric here and crew up with Smuggler's Copter? I get him for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, I get him for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 in the air. Bring him down to 4. Yeah, that's probably worth it, right? That's probably worth it. Alright, so... Let's take up on Veteran Motorist. And let's name... Lifelink. And then let's play... Odric. Crew up... Here. And go attacking. Now everything's flying indestructible lifelink. Looking for another lightning strike. Let's loot. Yes. All right, loot away the redundant Odric. Now, even if they have a uh, sphere safety, it's fine because Gideon can minus on it. Although they are going to be able to uh, to attack Gideon down to five. And that's the problem here. So please, opponent, none of the sphere of safety. Because that would actually be a big roadblock right now. Maybe I should have kept up a blocker for that reason. So I could have just thrown the game there, but we'll see. Meat grease is the best part, though, of what? He said that wasn't swamped in meat grease. Oh, you guys are talking about peppers? Don't get me started on peppers. You know what happens when you bring up peppers. I start talking for peppers for 15 minutes. You made vegetable pizza? Yeah, mushrooms, dude, are great. Especially when you put them with, like, rice. Mushrooms are so good in rice. All right, the opponent does not have a sphere of safety, and we got there. Moving on to sideboarding, we're going to bring in wear and tear. Which is pretty good here. And Chandra's pretty good to grind out as well, even though they're going to have the castaways. Cast downs. Uh, Daphne Salads might be able to stop their combo process, but I don't know how in depth they are on those cheapeners like we were. It could affect something, but I don't think I need it too badly. Declaration Stone might be useful. Let's bring in those and let's cut all of our filler, like our veteran motorists and our urban champions. Um. You know, maybe aerial responder is not the most relevant thing in the world. Maybe I prefer just the stronger attacker because the lifelink is not too relevant here at all. So yeah, let's just run it like that. So maybe a the legion might be good for grinding out as well. Nah. Just go like that. Gideon's minus six to exile. So he literally pluses, pluses, and then already ready to exile something. So it'd be really cool if you played it like in a blue in a white green deck with like play him on turn two off a of mana dork. That'd be pretty cool. I haven't done that in modern just because I I haven't been playing modern and paper a lot the past year, just because I've been playing just nonstop EDH. Probably like the past two years. It's just been an EDH grind. But yeah, last year I I played I still played um modern here and there, but this year I just like completely stopped. I've just been playing commander because commander is my favorite. 
All right, we're gonna be in the draw now, and that looks like a great keep, so let's keep it. The reveal of Forest. Sacred Foundry and pass the turn. Herald of the Pantheon, that's gotta die. But we don't have a removal spell currently, so... Oh wait, we do have a removal spell currently, so... I kind of want a Declaration of Stone now, but at the same time, I think I'd rather Declaration of Stone and Eidolon. But this slows them down a lot, I think. It might be worth it. Losing a lot of damage, but you know what? We're doing it. Slows them a lot. Cracks the clue and does nothing. Cool. Hajik. Okay, well, I definitely want to get Gideon going and Plusin so that he can have that minus six at the ready. And hope that they do not have a cast out. And Shardra's gonna be able to feel a crazy nut draw the following turn too, with that free mana. Be able to go Odric plus Taji can get that haste in there. Banishing light on Gideon. Saw that coming a mile away. Now check this. Chandra into Smuggler's Copter. Seems good. All right, next turn's gonna be a good turn, as long as I don't have a cast out here. Or sphere safety. They do have a cast out, unfortunately. So the nut draw is gonna be suddenly less nutty. All right, Odric. Through here, give everybody flying. Loot, try to find a wear and tear. Renan and Tajik will discard. Down to 17. We just gotta get him in the double lightning strike threshold, if possible. Rufix is insight. Finds a bunch of stuff. Forcer, sphere safety, sphere safety. Dang, that's two sphere safeties that we gotta deal with. And Corsair's here as well. Ooh, a Swift Blade Vindicator. Um. All right, let's get out Swift Blade Vindicator. Can we get them in range here? I think we can get them in range here. We're swinging for twelve, and they're in range of double lightning strike now. All right, let's go looting. Scarred a battlefield frog. All right, we should have this. They go to six here off playing a land, but I think they might just tap out for sphere safety and pass. And then we go lightning strike, lightning strike. And we can also, they still have a lot of cards in hand, so we can still get in for a bunch. Griffix's inside doesn't have. Wait, actually, wait. I was thinking of Ensnaring Ridge. So after a sphere of safety, they'll have two mana left over. So if they can play a Herald here, Herald of the Pantheon, they can get out of range. And I'd have to pay four to attack, which I can still do. And still get him the Smuggler's Copter and pay for one swing. So that's good. 
And we got him by the balls here. Baffling end, sure. And sphere safety. Sure thing, you got it. All right, EOT. Lightning strike ya. Untap. Lightning strike ya. And that'll do it. Getting there against Green White Enchantress, burning them out. The Swift Blade Vindicator Double Strike was clutch, getting them super low because Vindicator plus Odric is a sweet combo. I like it. Got a game here against Dora Yaki, and we're going to be on the draw with some Boros Odric aggro, and we're going to mull this. We don't have enough mana. We're going to mull that. We don't have enough mana. We're going to keep this one. And let's throw away Aurelia. And probably Aerial Responder. One spot of Timmy. So our plan here is to go fervent into into in a Tajik to just start mentoring and getting in there, and then Gideon for support. We drew the Aurelia we bought him anyways, because that's how Moda works. That is how Moto works. People say it's all random, but it's really just a photo bug. Ashep Oasis. Fervent Champagne. Get in there for one. Now, if anything, opponent play an X2. Abrupt Decay. At least that's not going to hit Gideon. So that's good. No! I need to take our Gideon now. Oh, Fiddy asks, Marin, do you have a favorite art design on a card? That would be Promo Sakura Tribelder. If not, I really like this Thought Sponge, my avatar. It's a really cool one. Westville Abbey, so there's some kind of go-wide deck. Perhaps a Coco deck. What do they find off once upon a time? Eyeless Tracker. And so now they're going to get their value. Forcer. Go with Aurelia. I can give this plus, but I don't know if I want to trade with Corsair. I probably want to keep my my Tajik alive. They're gonna keep that once upon a time. Got an if near Deadlands on top that they can play. So just literally black green value town. Didn't even play the tracker first. Swift end on Aurelia. That's unfortunate. All right. Uh, let's go for veteran motorist to scry. Lightning Strike, Battlefield Forge. Well, Lightning Strike can hit the Tireless Tracker or the Murderous Rider they're about to play. But we're still doing nothing because that Corsair is blocking us. I guess I'll keep this. Yeah, I think we lost. The value's taken over at this point. Yeah, the value's definitely taken over at this point. Like, I can strike that Tireless Tracker, but they already got their value. And then that Murderous Rider's gonna come out, and that, that Corsair's just tempoing me out way too much. I'll give it another top deck and see if I get something nuts. But if I don't get anything nuts, I think it's time to scoop. Because they're also gonna have Field of the Dead going. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Yeah, with Field of the Dead going too, it's just a little too late to do anything. 
All right, I'm gonna scoop it up. Go on a sideboarding and let's bring in Chandra's. Let's bring in Declaration and Stones. And let's bring in the Assembly Legion. It's gonna be a grind vest. And uh, let's bring in Wear and Tears because they're gonna have uh, Coursers. Is it really worth it just for that, though? Just for Coursers? It might be. I'll try it. Like, Furman Champion's always just the cut. And then, like, Veteran Motorist is always just the cut. And then, like, one Aerial Responder. Try it like that. And try to just get the Chandra down, and the Assemble the Legion down, and just go for the wide aggro, or the wide mid-range plan. Alright, yes, we're gonna be on the play. And, uh, this land- this hand's very land light, but I'm gonna keep it, because if I do draw land, mm -hmm. Swift Blade into Tajik's very aggressive. So let's hope for a land, hope for the best. That's a unique one, you like it? Yeah, dude, Promo Sakura Tri-Belder, or they actually just reprinted the promo art in the new commander set, which I'm salty about. But yeah, like that art is my favorite just because I love or like or like Sashiro the Avatar. Because I like um I I really like um reptiles. Big fan of reptiles. And I did get my land, so I can play Taji. Yo, Jogavo, you're super late. Kinda late because you're grinding arena ladder now that Oko's gone. Oh yeah, I understand that everybody's gonna be on arena now that Oko's gone. Oko was hurting their business. Now they can take Tajik, so now our plan's screwed. What are your thoughts on the Ape Snake? The Ape Snake, I love the Ape Snake. I think it's super good. Because it's sort of like uh, got that kind of Tender Shoe Dryad thing going on where you just make tokens every upkeep. All right, let's just drop out the healer's hawk and go attack it and leave up this lightning strike. Although it's not going to do anything because they're going to have a courser. But if I draw a land, I get out Aurelia. And if I draw another land, assembles there. Assemble should be good unless they got Assassin's Trophy, which they will. Courser. Elvish Rejuvenator. All right, ramps a little bit. So just black green field of the dead, yeah. I'm kind of tempted to just lightning strike them in the face. Is that wrong? I feel like that's not for bad of an idea, because the only thing I really have to hit is like a tracker. And it's going to be a while before they cast a murderous rider. I'm just going to strike their face. Dang. I drew a healer's hawk and that's it. I take it down to 10. They know my hand now. And there's the, the tireless tracker that I was going to strike. Come on, land. Yay, we got the land. So white, red, whatever, whatever. Aurelia. And hope they don't have an abrupt decay. They do have an abrupt decay, unfortunately. Oh, they got Noxious Grasp. Everyone has that! Everybody's playing that card. Get in there. Alright, I'll happily trade with the, the Tireless Tracker. I'm fine with that. I'll happily trade with the Tracker. And I really need a land for the Assemble Legion or I'm screwed. And if they have a thought season, I'm screwed too. Our promise. And now they got Field of the Dead going, so I gotta win quick. They're likely gonna be able to out Field of the Dead in my Assemble the Legion. Yep, they also got Westvale Abbey as well, so they'll be able to activate it in, like, next turn. I didn't get a land, unfortunately. I mean, at the least, I can tear a clue. Watch them top deck a Courser, though. 
All right, they didn't have the, the West Mill Abbey there, so that's good. Dang, now they can they can West Mill Abbey next turn and I and I die. So I I don't know what can get it for me here, but I'm likely just losing. Maybe they forget about their abbey. We'll have to wait and put them to the test and see. But now they just went wide enough to where there's nothing we can do about it. Alright, so that's the game. Their deck is busted good. Their deck is so good. Their deck is amazing. Got a game here against De Lazaro, and yes, we're gonna be on the play with some Boros Aggro. We don't have white mana or red mana here, but I'm gonna keep it anyways because Aerial Spawner and Odric is pretty good. So I'm gonna hope that does something, and that if I draw red mana, hopefully Lightning Strike can stabilize us. But I think these are. I only have. Se I have seven planes in the deck, so. And there is 23 total lands, so there's a lot of red to draw into. Green. This would be the perfect opportunity. Oh man, just another basic planes. Not ideal. And they got Servant of the Conduit. I hope it's not a Marvel deck. Alright, we did get red. I could kill a Servant, but I'm just gonna do my own plan for now. I have a good feeling that their servant's not going to matter too much here. Pummeler? Pummeler time? Bristling Hydra. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to kill that, so let's just go with... Um... I probably do just go Odric here, despite the fact that he doesn't, like, actually gain anything. You know, I could go Veteran Motorist and try to scry into another red source, and if I get another red source, I get to go Fervent Champion into Odric, and everything gets Flying Haste, Double Strike, Lifelink. Or not Double Strike, but you know what I mean. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. So let's just get in with the, uh, the... The... Aether Responder. Aerial Responder. Let's scry it up. If they're just green, red, mid-range, that's fine. I hope it's not Pummeler, but it likely is. Ooh, Tajik. Well, Tajik seems good if our Odric doesn't die. Um, I think I'm gonna keep Tajik, right? Yeah, but we definitely want the red source next. And hope that nothing happens to our board here. If nothing happens to our board here, we're doing some great stuff next turn. No harness lightnings. No! Okay, they hit the motorist. That's fine. Oh, do they have another one? They probably have another one. I'm just getting in there. I'll take it. Alright, sure. Don't have another one. White mana. Servant. Sure. Alright, we're good. So, Sacred Foundry shocked. Oh wait, what? I didn't need a red source. What was I talking about? Why did I scry for a red source? I didn't need a red source. Well, that's weird on my part. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I just needed a land. Yeah, but I, I already had a land, so what was I thinking? What was going through my head? That's fine, though. We're still doing some good stuff next turn with, like, Odric plus Lightning Strike. And if they don't kill Odric, then we might just win. Yeah, Tajik and First Strike, that's what it allows me to do. Alright, no more Harness Lightnings, and it's a good thing that their deck is very removal light. All they have is four Harness Lightnings, and that's it. But if they are a Pummeler deck, then they can just win out of nowhere. If 
But I have first strike and everything, so I can just triple block. But the problem is, they can have, like... If they got Team or Battle Rage, we're probably losing, because they're gonna, like, use their energy, pump it to six, and then they're gonna go, um, like, Titanic Growth, and then they're just gonna go, you know, Team or Battle Rage. What's the harm in blocking with just Fervent Champion? Because if they do have exactly Titanic Growth plus, or Invigorated Rampage, plus, um, plus Team or Battle Rage, I would go to one, and that could help a lot. Um, and then if I go Tajik, Lightning Strike them, that's, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's one short. That's one short. And that would suck. But I think it's better safe than sorry here. I have a feeling that they got, like... Nope. Alright. The jump block works. Alright, so I think we're good. Another bristling Hydra. Alright, Tajik. All right. Ooh, that's actually lethal. I forgot about Mentor. I forgot about Mentor, so that's lethal. Do you run Brave the Elements? No, we don't. That's a decent sideboard card, though. It's kind of like half a Veil of Summer. Lightning Strike, yeah. All right, that'll do it. On the sideboarding, in this matchup, we probably want not Chandra's declaration and st declaration and stones. Probably not very good against the Hydras, but it at least makes them use their energy. So, as always, let's cut the fervent champions. Always the filler. All right, I'll keep that. It's got a declaration in stone. Got a motorist to scry. Basic forest passes. Long tusk cub, servant of the conduit. All right, let's get a veteran motorist. Start scrying. There's an Odric. All right, let's bottom the veteran motorist. Let's top the Odric. Four mana. Time for the Bristling Hydra. Alright, so... I can't really get around that Hydra. I can Declaration and Stone it, but they'll just give it protection. So, I guess I'm gonna go... Not Declaration Stone. I'm gonna go Swift Blade Vindicator here. You know, I, I, could, I could just, like, attack and make them think that I got Lightning Strike. Is that worth it to get in three extra damage? I think it is. Yeah, because if they if they do block and put a counter on it, they they might think I have lightning strike in response. So I think they're gonna take it. Pretty sure they're gonna take it here. They don't they can't lose their bristling hydra. Yep, they take it. Alright, free damage. And let's go swift blade vindicator. And then let's just pass the turn. And next turn, Odric's going to give all of our stuff Double Strike, Trample, and Vigilance. Another Servant. So they can go double counter on Bristling Hydra. That's fine. I'm going to take it. 
They got the same start they did in the last game. Ooh, aerial spawner. That's interesting. All right, we'll we'll do that for surprise next turn. I could bait it with the aerial spawner, but I don't really want to. Screw it. Just do it. Oh, I could have declaration in stone. That'd have been awesome. Yeah, see, I I should have declaration in stoned. I should have declaration in stoned. But I got double strike. Or down to 11. I hope you just play two more servants. There's a pummeler. That has to die. Alright, so deck and stone this. Because screw that nonsense. You got a blossoming defense? They don't have a blossoming defense. So now let's go to combat. I think I will offer a trade. Are they just gonna trade with them? Just with one. Let's get that lifelink out there. Might be important. All right, we'll take the four. Go to eight. Another servant, man. Another deck and stone, please. Nope, no deck and stone. Still offering the trade. Gonna block swift blade. They do block swift blade. Cry me into lethal. Double Aurelia. Well, bottom one. Do I want to keep one? I think I do. Because I can pump the life linker. I think I do chump here. Oh, they let it go. I guess Pummeler. We got another one. That's okay. Aurelia. Go to combat, pump the aerial responder. Get him for four, put them to three. And we go up to 14. We're so close. Don't have TBR, because I don't want to block here. I really don't. All right, so if they if I do jump with area responder and they have TBR, say that I do that, so they could pump one, two, wait, it's three to activate it, right? Three. So they can do it four times, put it to eight. That's 16. So I would live. I would live. But I would die if they have TBR, so I think I gotta chump. Yeah, now please don't have a harness lightning off the top for Aurelia. Yep, oh, they're going for it. Good thing I chumped. So even with TBR, it's not lethal. Did you actually top that Harness Lightning? Wow. Collision? What card is this? Oh, plus four, plus two, and trample. Just the, the random clutch 
other half of that card that you would never expect to see play just happened to be clutched there. Oh, that is so dumb. All right, well, we're in top deck mode. They're kind of in top deck mode. We just need a lightning striker like a Tajik or something. Because we're going to be dead next turn. All right, Tajik or Bolt? Yay! All right, come on. Have nothing. Have nothing. Just have nothing. Just have nothing, dude. Justice was served. Justice was served! Yes! Oh, the clutch. Oh, that was too terrifying. Th those decks, those literally those decks that can mollywop you out of nowhere with one single spell, those are terrifying to go up against, but we got it. Oh, that was clutch. Got a game here against Cabbies, and we're going to be on the draw with some Boros Odric Aggro. What's up, Samurai Dance Rules? Uh, we are going to keep this hand. That looks pretty good. Champion into Vindicator, or Copter into Vindicator into Odric. Get all flying double strike trample and everything. Pretty good. Okay, Mana Confluence into Land War Elves. I don't know what's going on here. Alright, let's get off Riven Champion. Sorf Sorfon combo is... is Fun, you've been testing it? Oh, that's awesome. That YouTube video is getting a lot of views really fast. It's pretty cool. Rogue Refiner. The Royal Scions. Okay. That is fine. Firing Vantage. Alright, let's just go Smuggler's Copter. And then let's... I guess I'm going to attack the Royal Scions. Sure. Because once I get Odric down with everything having Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste, um, that should be game anyway. Yo, what's up, Carmona 13 How's it going? How you doing today? Yo, what's up, Deathclock9998? What's up? It's uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. I've been playing that nonstop. It's been great. I actually just beat the game last night. And I've just been doing post-game stuff. Ooh, Swiftblade Vindicator. All right, let's actually go. Wait, what does this do? Uh, when it enters, it fights up to one target creature, sack food, and put a counter on it. That card's so good. All right, I guess I'm gonna get in with Smuggler's Copter here. Let's go Vindicator. And crew on here. And I'm gonna see first if I'm gonna get in Healer's Hawk or Fervent Champion. So let's attack the Royal Scions. Let's loot. Alright, let's loot away Sacred Foundry. Alright, let's go for a champion pass. So next turn we got Odric. So everything's gonna be flying double strike trample. And this should be probably game. I think. No, no, I think we're swinging 10 next turn. Yeah. 10's pretty good. The Heart of Kirin works so good with the Royal Scions, but it's fine. We're gonna have double strike on Smuggler's Copter, so it's okay. Alright, let's get down, Odric. And let's crew with Fervent Champion. Oh, what's this? Petty Theft Bouncing Odric? No! Well, now I can't swing anymore. Alright, I guess we're passing. Opponent's deck is very annoying so far. 
They're shocking and hurting themselves with Confluence a lot, though. The all muddy malt. Still in Vegas this weekend? What were you doing in Vegas? Is vacation or do you... Like... I don't know. First strike, flying vigilance trample. That is fine. Gets in for six. We'll take it. Tajik. All right. Well, I kind of just want to. Uh, I can lightning strike this wicked wolf. And just try to like go in at the royal scions, but then I don't have a way to kill this the heart of Kirin after that. Um, I think I have to like crew smuggler's copter, attack royal scions, and then when they go to block with heart of Kirin, I just lightning strike the heart of Kirin. And then after that, I follow up with uh swift blade vindicator. All right. Uh, they only have one card left. I know they're gonna block with the Brazen Borrower, though. That's the problem. So I'm, like, forced to play Odric here. What's your last card? Don't be something annoying. You just did so much. Don't, don't have your last card be amazing. Alright, let's try to go to combat. And they have another Petty Theft! Dude, what the heck? This is so annoying. It's obnoxious as a gear hulk. Now they get to play one of the Brazen Borrowers. Dang, their, their deck is a pest. Your son had a baseball tournament? Lots of poker late night. Hopefully he won. How would you like to check out a new Sahili infinite combo? What's the infinite combo with the Sahili? They're just gonna take up on Brazen Borrower, so now I, I can't even block effectively with anything. See, now, like, it's like, I have to block this Wicked Wolf with my Smuggler's Copter, and then that, that stupid Heart of Kieran's gonna stick around. At least I get to loot. Hopefully find another lightning strike or something, or another smuggler's copter. Alright, uh, let's ditch the redundant swift blade. I need, like, an aerial responder, something to go with the Odric. So I have to double lightning strike the heart of Kirin. That's what I have to do. Okay, I gotta land. I'm going to play it so that I can do a double play this turn. Actually, I didn't need to do it. Alright, so I can try to attack the Royal Scions down to one. It's not going to matter. Yeah, I have to double Lightning Strike the Heart of Kirin. That's what I know I have to do. You know, I, no, I have to kill the Royal Scions here for sure. I do. I do. I gotta kill the Royal Scions here. So attack the Royal Scions just with this one. Okay, they're 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 letting me they're letting me kill the heart of Kieran. That's great. That's great. So I get the trample in there too. For one. And it's down to two. Now I can lightning strike the brazen borrower. Okay. Okay. Now we're talking. Lightning strike this brazen borrower, and we're living. Oh no, they got the royal sands to take it up. All right, never mind. Dang, the opponent's deck was an absolute pest. All right, let's bring in wear and tear. Let's bring in deck and stone. Um, let's bring in. They're they're grindy probably, but do I want Chandra? 
I can deal two to a planes. No, I can't. Only each opponent. Chandra might not be horrible. This feels like a grindy matchup. I feel like our filler is always veteran motorist and like fervent champion. Um, one Tajik. And like one. Maybe I don't need so many deck and stones. I don't know about Chandra's. What do you guys think? Should I have Chandra's in this matchup? I think the answer is probably like. You know, if they get a Heart of Cure and they can kill us very easily. I'm gonna leave in a Fervent Champion and uh, just bring in another deck in stone. I don't want Chandra here. What's up, Brainless96? Alright, so we're gonna be on the play for this game. Alright, I'll keep that one. Gideon's pretty good. No turn one elves, that's good. Smuggler's Copter, let's just go Veteran Motorist, no. No, let's go Smuggler's Copter. No. Uh. Mm. I don't know. Alright, yes, yeah, screw it, let's just do Smuggler's Copter. Next turn we'll go Gideon and Crew it. Yep, now all they're gonna do is petty theft here, so it doesn't matter what I do. Just get out Gideon here. Crew. And tick up Gideon on here to give it lifelink. Petty theft. Abrades it. Alright, at least we got Gideon going, so that's pretty good. They watch it on YouTube, thought you'd check out the stream. Well, thank you for coming out to the stream. I appreciate you. Glad you enjoy the videos. Oko. Oko's still not banned. He got banned in Standard. He should have been also banned in Pioneer, but he didn't. But at least I got Aurelia here to give plus two plus O to target creature. So that's good. Alright, let's uh, tick up. Give Aurelia whatever. Lifelink. Pump up Gideon for two. Attack Oko. Get Oko off the table! Now, don't have a second Oko to nerf my Aurelia. That'd be rude. Now, Oko's busted everywhere he's at. He's so hard to beat. Like, if I couldn't deal with Oko that turn, he would have taken over the game. Easy. If I couldn't deal with him that turn, it would have been done. Because then he would have just won, played a land shock, he would have then lightning strike the elk, and then, like, petty thefted the Aurelia. Or no, like, you know, vice versa. Real Scions is fine. All right, let's play a Clifftop Retreat. Let's plus an Aurelia to give Lifely. And then let's go to Combat and give Gideon plus two plus O. And attack the Royal Scions and attack them. Let's Veteran Motorist to Scry. This to the bottom, Declaration and Stone to the bottom, because we already have a Lightning Strike. Swift Blade Vindicator, go. Alright, so it's looking okay so far. And Gideon's already ready to ult. To even exile one of their lands. Oh, non-land permanent. You're a little biased, you got yours in the mail today. Wait, what? All right, opponent scoops it up. On to game three. I think I'm gonna run it right back like that. That's fine. Infinite with Sahili. All right, we'll check it out in between games. Remind me if I forget.
Wait, what did you just get in the mail? Oh, your Okos. Um, all right, this hand's fine. Let's keep that. With Blade and Gideon with two removal spells at the ready. Not bad. Oh, not without a spark double? So you need spark double for infinite Sahili. They found a glory bringer, which is really annoying. Dang, Tajik. So I can go Swiftblade and Tajik, which is pretty good. Fog goes according to plan. Aerial Spawner is not bad. Now, don't go with the three drop walker here. No Oko, no Rose Scions, because that'd be really annoying. Build a Goose. Dang, opponent's attack is busted. Goose, Oko, Royal Scions, Heart of Kirin. Petty Theft. Crazy. Alright, so. I'm gonna try to go on the Odric or the Tajik aggro plan. Let's do it. Enter on here. And now that makes it so Swiftblade trades with Heart of Kirin if they ever want to crew that up later. They're down to 13. Not bad. Alright, what busted thing you got? You got a lot of mana. Five mana. Alright, what you got? Glory bringer to kill. Oh, that doesn't work. Please exert it. Please exert it. Please. Thank you. Wait. Yep. Oh, wait. Why'd that work? It says prevent all non combat damage. That would be dealt to. Oh, other creatures. I was like, why did that work? All right. So, what can I do here? I don't need to deal with the glory bringer right now because um, it's exerted. So, it's not going to untap. Um, so, I can go Aurelia. And I can give plus two plus over here. That seems pretty busted. Yeah, let's do that. Aurelia. Plus two plus oh here. Get him for eight. They're down to four. And I got a lightning strike to bring him to one. So they're on the they're on the back end right here. We got the high ground. I can also get rid of a blocker. Chandra's fine. That doesn't do enough damage to Aurelia to kill it. And I can hit this Oko. Or I can hit this, uh, this Goose here. Also, um, whatchamacallit. I can give Indestructible with Gideon here. They're gonna have to chump block with Heart of Kirin. Yeah, I, I definitely want to make them chump block with Heart of Kirin. So I can go... Lightning Strike. No, they're at three. What the heck? How'd they get to three? How'd they get to- I didn't- oh, they play- oh, they took a pain off their mana confluence, but we got there against that super busted deck. Teamer Planeswalkers had Chandra, Oko, Royal Siles. The only other busted thing is if they went white for Teferi, but like, that was a crazy, crazy insane deck from our opponent right there. Got a game here against H. Tot Heb. Um, and we're gonna be on the play with some Boros Odric, and that is going to be a mole because we don't have mana. Although if we do top deck a land, better motors to scratch in a more. But I'm not counting on that being on the play. All right, let's keep that one. That looks pretty good. And I think this hand we're going to throw away um, probably a Fervent Champion. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It's kind of just meant to be paired with Odric and only Odric. So let's just play a tap, cliff, top, retreat, and pass. See if they got an elf, we can lightning strike. Because I think this is good, a pretty good plan to just protect Gideon and just get in there. Alright, that's pretty good. So now this uh, Swift Blade is going to have lifelink from Gideon. So just don't Thought Erasure me and we should be good. We'll be friends forever if you don't Thought Erasure me here. Push. Alright, that's not the worst thing. And Witching Well, Artifact Action, all right, something, something Tezzeretti is going on here. You should try Glasses, you think it would help? What do you mean Glasses? Help with what? It's a Paul McCabe. All right, well, you know what we're doing? It's Gideon time. Hopefully they don't have a swift end here. Yeah, it's always satisfying to beat Mono Blue Tempo. 
It's a good point too to land. Okay, they thought Erasure to turn late. That's good. Probably takes their aerial spawner here. They do. Seeing glasses, a lot of people wear them. Yeah, but like, I don't, I don't need seeing glasses. I see perfectly. I, my my vision's fine. My color perception sucks. I'm pretty dang colorblind, but um, but my vision's good. Like I can see things like 2020. But if you tell me is this red or is this green, I'd probably get confused. Um, so let's uh, use Gideon to give the Fervent Champion a lifelink. Get in there. And now Gideon's ready to ult. Not sunglasses. With the R&B. Yeah, there's chroma glasses, but I'm not about to buy those. Am I colorblind? No. I'm just, uh, I, I, I have bad color perception, but I'm not colorblind. Um, all right. There's definitely, but yeah, like, I, I definitely confuse some colors. Like, there's definitely been some magic cards sometimes where I thought it was a, a black card, but it was actually green. Um, all right, so. Against blue, black, probably control or Tezzeret. I probably want Chandra Torture Defiance. They had Fatal Push, so I know they're a little bit controlly. So let's bring in Chandra and Assemble. Let's cut a couple Motorists and a Fervent Champion. Alright, um... I got Gideon, and Gideon's proven to be good here, so I guess I'll keep it. It's a very slow hand, but this is going to be a very slow match, so might as well. Alright, Sun... Sun can hollow, pass turn. Alright, so Odric can give all my dudes indestructible flying vigilance and lifelink. It is indestructible, so it works. Odric's not as relevant in this matchup, though. Fox Amber, so it's definitely an Emery deck of sorts. The Witching Well was kind of obvious that it was Emery. So they can turn to an Emery. Witching Well, now they can do a one mana Emery here. Yep, there is the Emery. Battle at the bridge. Oh, some combos are going on here. Get out Gideon if possible. If they don't have a negate. Talak or Buki. Alright, sure. Alright, so now we can find out what their infinite outlet is. Usually with Emery and Pioneer, it's Scrap Trawler. Okay, they're just drawing some cards. They don't have what they need. It's usually Scrap Trawler plus uh, Jeskai Ascendancy. They're going to recast the Witching Well from the Grave. That's good value right there. Alright, I guess our best play is just playing an Odric. We don't got the world's most aggressive hand, but I hope the top deck is Swift Blade Vindicator. That would be nice. So, in just blue black, what could they possibly be doing to go infinite? Scrap. Oh yeah, yeah, it's something to untap a creature. So it's like Springleaf Drum and Scrap Trawler. No, it's got to be just Guy Sinisi. So it's not. It's not that. Dig through Timmy. Probably looking for another Mox Amber and a Scrap Trawler.
Uh, so there was a banned and restricted update today. And today being the 18th of November, which you're going to see this on YouTube, probably on the 20th. Um, but they did no changes to Pioneer. I'm surprised they didn't ban Dig Through Time because Dig Through Time is easily the most busted thing in Pioneer. Auto Razor. Well, they don't have a really good thing to take here, so that's fine. Our hand's pretty dang redundant. These lands we don't even need, and this Odric is redundant, so the only thing we have in hand is an aerial responder. Can I get a swift blade? Tajik. Well, Tajik's not bad. It's more aggressive, so I'll play it. All right, pass a turn. They gotta have, like, their combo at this point. Like, they're 20 cards deep in their deck. They gotta have something. Herald of Anguish, that's gonna deal with our board. All right, ditch a redundant Odric. All right. I guess we're going to go with two of those. Yes, I'm getting in with everything. Yeah, this thing's just going to take over the game. If they just start sniping my dudes, I'll just scoop. Because I'm not about to beat that. But I could top deck lightning strikes. Which, I guess that's a reason to play on. Yeah, they're just a hyper, hyper Herald deck. Trying to get a Herald as quick as possible. And start throwing artifacts around. And then getting them back with Emery. So yeah, I guess that's what Emery's there for. It's just a blue-black Herald. Blue-black Psy value. That's all it is. You're also tired of Fires of Invention? Yeah, Fires of Invention's really good. Super good card. Well, that's not too good. Uh, I guess I have no reason to even do anything because, you know, I can't. I just got a top deck Lightning Strikes. Doesn't this gain them life? No, it doesn't. Now they can start generating just poster strudels of value with that Mox Hammer. It's oodles and strudels value. Because Psy... Yeah, I knew it was a Tezzer deck. I told you from the start. So Psy can like start sacking this Mox Amber and then Emery can keep getting it back. So, And now they have Kalidus. So I'm literally screwed here. I'm literally dead. So let's scoop it up. And go on to sideboarding. And now we know that we need Declaration in Stone. And, um... Rest in peace for Emery. I guess. I think I want Veteran Motors to help find that stuff. Over, like, Fervent Champion. I guess I gotta make cuts anyways. Do I even want Healer's Hawks? Probably not. Not aggressive enough. I guess I'll run it like that. I don't think I need wear and tear when they can just get their stuff back. Alright, take out all the one drops and run it like that. We're just gonna go for the mid game. Would you like to play first? Sure. Alright, let's keep that hand. Fine mid range hand. There's been a lot of control decks today. Yeah, definitely. All right, get out this. Oh no! For some reason, I thought it was a sacred foundry. 
All right, well, I don't get to get out Swiftblade. Because if I went to go, got to go Swiftblade into Gideon and Odric, that would have been super amounts of damage. Now I got super punished. All right, Rebuke. So they would have been at 16 right now because I would have gotten for two. Sarah schematic. Now they can play Emery here if they have it. Yep. Happy fun times. Another Gideon. All right, let's play another Gideon. I guess I could have lightning struck Emery, but I don't think I need to right now. They don't have anything to get back. Do they have a Mox Amber? Nope, they just got the Herald of Anguish. That's even better. Scar to Swift Blade Vindicator. Come on, please. Removal. That's not removal. Um, What am I supposed to do here now? Like, now they can just use Herald and just, like, start throwing these things around. I gotta deal with the Emery here, probably. Oh, this is so terrible, dude. Now Emery gets that value with the servos. The servo schematics. So I have to... I have to kill Emery here. Pass a turn. At least Gideon gets to live for a second. Not if they throw the servo schematic at my swift blade. Gideon will die, but maybe there's a chance that Assemble Legion can get. No, never mind. Never mind. I was gonna say Assemble the Legion, and then if I top back Deputy to t uh, or Declaration in Stone, then deal with the Herald. Then maybe the the Assemble can get there, but not when they top deck. Not when they top deck a Thought Erasure. Yep, and now they kill Gideon. Alright, well, Declaration and Stone or Scoop. That's not gonna do it. And that is the game. Man, super, super unfortunate. Super unfortunate. That was so close. Got a game here against Ramzamela7, and yes, we're going to be in the play with some Pioneer Boros Odric. And that is going to be probably a keep, even though it's slow, we're on the play, and Gideon's really good, so I'm hoping that the opponent is not hyper-aggressive. Okay, looks like they are hyper-aggressive. All right. So this is going to be a little bit difficult, but the positive side here is that we got Aerial Responder, which has lifelink. So that'd be cool. And the opponent didn't play anything on turn one. All right, so let's just keep going. Sacred Foundries and passing. Yo, what's up, System4200? Hey, hey, hey. So I had a lot, a lot of audio issues before the stream, System4200. So um, if you like, if you can let me know real quick, just do me a favor and let me know if the audio sounds normal, then that, that would be super cool because I was fiddling around with it so much. All right, um, I guess we're just gonna start dropping aerial responders. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Sounds great, awesome. Audio's clear, thank you, old man Urza. Yeah, because the reason the stream is delayed, what is it right now? The stream was delayed an hour. No, it's, we're 37 minutes late, but I started streaming like an hour and 10 minutes ago because I was just gonna start early, but then I was having audio issues and I went through all kinds of steps and, and troubleshooting to try to fix it. I don't know how it, it screwed up. Like it, like nothing changed. So I don't know what the difference was, or what like what changed or anything. Oh no, goblin engine or goblin whatever his name plus wild slash is gonna deal with our board. Ooh, lightning strike's not bad. I'm definitely just gonna get out another aerial responder. I want to start gaining life, and then I can go next turn Gideon plus lightning strike. Hopefully I get an Odrix that my Gideon also gains Flying Vigilance and Lifelink. Because that would be pretty cool.
Uh, no, stream's still there. Dragon Whisper. Ooh, the devotion. Is it Fanatic and Mogus time? Or is it Hazaret time? What's it going to be? They're doing something with all that mana. Good thing Figure of Destiny is not in. Aw, oh, Fall of Titans. Well, that deals with it. All right, so let's go with uh, plus one plus O. Oh, create a four four dragon. Well, I can't let that happen. So, um, how much devotion do they got? They got a lot of devotion. Well, I guess I have to go. Um, Gideon plus Smuggler's Copter, but then we would die to Dragon Whisperer. Yeah, I think I have to just lightning strike the Dragon Whisperer plus play a Smuggler's Copter. The next turn I go crew with and then make Life Link and then hopefully draw another piece of removal. Alright, I guess that's what we're doing. Yep. Oh, they can just crack their Ramen Up Ruins and kill us. They can do that too. Let's see if they remember. Odric gives Skulk. It's because he was printed in Eldritch Moon and, and Skulk was in Eldritch Moon. So they wanted to get some love for that ability. I'm gonna crack the Ramanop Ruins. Siege Gang Commander and throws two goblins at us. Yep. Alright, so the opponent had the removal for our aerial responders and that got us. So on to sideboarding, we're going to need probably wear and tear to deal with ley line um i i definitely want deck and stone bring in deck and stone and maybe i want to deal with that ley line because i want to be removing their their stuff too um let's cut fervent champions because they're filler whatever and veteran motorists are pretty filler as well um yeah turn it like that you know maybe i should be keeping the cheap stuff in Maybe I should cut clunkier stuff, like cut one Tajik. I know I want my four drops. Maybe I keep in a Fervent Champion and cut a Gideon. No, mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense, though. Especially when it dies to the Goblin Chain Whirler. So maybe that means I should cut the Healer's Hawks, too. But Veteran Motorists die. Hold on. Veteran Motorists die to the Goblin Chain Whirler. And they're going to have a play set of Chain Whirlers. Dang, maybe I don't want those Veteran Motorists. I'll go first. Um, all right, I'll keep that. It's got deck and stone and lightning strike. Swift Blade Vindicator. So I need lands and an Odric to make use of this Vindicator, but it sucks that the Goblin Chain Whirler just deals with a lot of our stuff. All the other words are evergreen. It looks out of place. That's true. Yeah, like unblockable would have been cool, except unblockable is not an ability. Unblockable is like, usually says this creature can't be blocked and that's it. All right, so if I can get down Vindicator into Tajik, we can start beating face really hardcore. All right, let's go to combat, attack for two. Oh, I forgot to get nice basic lands. We'll do that after this game. All right, let's see how this go. Nothing on two mana. Please give me a land. Yay! Now I can go Tajik and pump up the Swift Blade Vindicator. Don't kill my stuff. All right, they're not killing my stuff. Nice. But I have a feeling they're going to Sweltering Suns us right now. I feel like we're getting sweltering suns here. Okay, it works. So we get in for s eight. Down to 11. What is your criterion for nice? Nice can mean a lot of things. There's a certain number 
that whenever it comes up, everybody in the chat spams nice. And also, nice is just whenever something's good. There goes our healer's hawk. Why didn't our healer's hawk die? Oh, prevent all non-combat damage that be dealt to your creatures. Nice. That's a nice right there. All right, so um, let's let's just um, let's lightning. No wait, do I want to save lightning strike or do I just want a deck in stone? I don't want to give them a land. Oh no, they investigate. I think I'm okay with them investigating. All right, let's deck in stone. All right, let's go to combat. And let's just let Tajik trade. Put another counter in the Swift Blade. At least that gets some devotion off their board, and that's fine by me. And now they're going to take a bunch, go down to four. And if I can hit them for one more damage, they're in range of Lightning Strike. Plays a ramen up. All right, what you got? They're going to crack a clue. Can you deal with the swift blade? And you cannot? All right. Sweet. On to sideboarding. Now we're going to cut these veteran motorists because they die to, um, they die to Goblin Chain Whirler. So we're going to bring in Chandra's because Chandra's can be removal and probably assemble the Legion like over a swift blade vindicator or a healer's hawk. It's because... You know, it it dies to the Chain Whirler. I guess we'll run it like that. We're cutting a lot of creatures, but it has to be done. Okay. We're on the draw now. They are deciding whether or not to play first. They should be playing Boros. They're the one with the Kalia thing. Kalia of the Vast. Why does Kalia, like... Why is Kalia not an angel? I don't understand why Kalia is a human when literally Kalia has wings like an angel. Why didn't they just make Kalia an angel? Curious to that lore decision. All right, let's keep that. We got the same start as we did last time. Healer's Hawk and Vindicator into Tajik with Deckenstone. So we had last time and it worked out. So let's just keep doing this thing. We got a two drop this time. They do have a two drop this time. All right, Ember Hauler. So that can blow stuff up. All right. Um, do I want to let that go? Because that can kill... No, I feel like they're going to tap out, but like, if I go Vindicator here, I'm so open. I'm so open to a Chain Whirler. I don't know if I want to take that. I might just like Deck and Stone this to save a creature. Yeah, like Deck and Stone it and then just like get in. Because I don't want to like play Vindicator and just get two for one by a Chain Whirler. There's a Chain Whirler. Yeah, see? Exactly. That's why I didn't go with the Vindicator. All right. Let's get Aerial Responder down. They're gaining some life back. I want to draw a land so I can Lightning Strike plus Swift Blade and then do the Tajik plan again. I'll take it. Burning tree, don't play Nykthos. Okay, into Clue Crack. Clue Crack Clan. A braid. Oh, Chandra would have been great. Um. Alright, I think I want to just lightning strike this and pass. Because I if they have a Nykthos, I don't want them to get that devotion. You know what? Yeah, we're just gonna do that. Just do it now and pass. I don't want to, like, give them a chance to play a Nykthos, because I won't be able to respond because Nykthos is a mana ability. They got a Torbrand, so if I can get a Chandra, if I can get Chandra down, that'd be nice. So please deck give me a land. 
I gotta deal with the Chandra. Yay! I can deal with the Chandra. Alright, blast Torbran. Let them kill Chandra. Oh man. Okay, there's Odric. There is Odric. So I can play Odric, and the next turn I play Swift Blade Vindicator. Mm -hmm. And if I draw a land, also Tajik, and then they all get haste, double strike, vigilance, trample. So yeah, play Odric here. And hope they can't do anything about it. Alright, don't kill it, opponent. Don't kill it. Another ley line. That's fine. That's fine. Please give me a land. Please. Oh, that's that's fine too. That's fine too. That's fine too. I'll take that. Alright, go to combat. Give flying vigilance and lifelink to Odric. And let's get in there. Alright, that's not bad. I'll take that. That's okay. <laughs> The land would be sweet here. Flying Haze Vigilant Double Strike Trample. Kanatic Amogus, that's okay. Dude, why are they attacking? I think that's bait. I'm gonna block. Alright. I got the land. So Swift Blade Vindicator. Is this gonna be lethal? I think this is lethal. Uh yeah, they all got double strike. <laughs> I think that's lethal. <laughs> that's 612. 16 right there. They're forced to chump block and go to one. And they're empty-handed. Yep, that's fine. They're at one. Empty-handed. What you got? Don't be something nuts. <laughs> Yay! We did it! Oh man, that o the Odric is so good! That Odric is amazing! I love that Odric so much. He's so underrated. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Welcome everybody to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And we're speeding up these next two. As I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. That game ended very quickly. The opponent had like nothing. So, but I got the impression that they might be a control deck or like Esper control maybe. So I go into the sideboard and bring in Chandra's and Assemble Legion. Luckily I get them in my opener. Um, but after they strategic planning and they got the fair wishes, what they do here, I did not expect this deck to be what it is. It's not Esper Control. So what they did is they use their Fae of Wishes. They can pay two mana, discard two cards, and pick it up to their hand. So when they do that, they discard two Omnisciences. And so then they play their fifth land and they cast Obsidas Aid to return Omniscience from their graveyard to their battlefield. And then they can cast that Fae of Wishes for free to tutor something from their sideboard. So they grab Enter the Infinite and then they draw their entire deck. And then they get Jace Wilder Mysteries, and since it's a lab man, they just won. So that's a crazy combo. A little bit fragile, in my opinion, uh, since, you know, you need to draw the out that's aid, and you need to find a way to discard the Omniscience. You gotta have the two-card combo. It's a little bit difficult, but still, they got it there. They got the net draw. So we go to the next game. I'm just sitting here behind this deafening silence. This game was literally, like, half an hour. Game number three was, like, half an hour, because the opponent just would not die. So like I they there have been at three like the entire game they go up to four in a second but like I'm just trying to get in one swing but literally just watch just watch every single turn that I go to swing they have something like they have something like every single turn it's it's crazy I don't know how it happened but it just keeps happening and so like they had literally noxious graphs there to deal with Odric and then they had to settle the wreckage and they had a play set. 
of Azuria's charms every single time I went to combat. So they, that stupid Fey of Wishes for them did so much work blocking so much damage. If that 1-4 body wasn't there, we would have killed them a long time ago. But, you know, they just kept having answers. And what they do here is they use Teferi to bounce a Deafening Silence, and then they Obzidat's aid back another Teferi and bounce the other Deafening Silence, and they're able to go off. So they just would they just kept resisting and would not take a single swing. And I could not top back a Lightning Strike to save my life. So that's the game. So we go on to the next one. Now, this is against Mono Blue Tempo, and this is the world's most annoying deck, no matter what format you play against it in. If you play against it in... And uh, like Legacy, I mean, Legacy would have a different color splash, but like if you play against it in Popper, play against it in even like Draft, Standard, Pioneer, it's just going to be so annoying. So they got there because they got the, uh, the turn to uh, Curious Obsession and I couldn't deal with it into the Tempest Gin, so I'm not going to beat that. So we go into the next game and this game I get a lot of flyers and these flyers are pretty clutch because the opponent was lacking a lot of flying power all they had was that cloudfin raptor and all the rest of their dudes were ground dudes and because a lot of my flyers have lifelink i'm just stabilizing every time they try to swing at me for a bunch it's not going to work because i have a bunch of lifelinking flyers and they're able to like they're trying to tempo me out and trying to race me but it's not working and i'm able to just like casually just swing lethal in the air i get the um the aurelia gets countered but it doesn't matter so we go on to the next game and this game was pretty long this was like this last game was the length of those other two games combined. So I bring in the Chandra's because those Jins, those X4 Jins, uh, Tempest Jins are very hard to deal with. And I just, even, no matter that Chandra was four mana, I just wanted a way to just blast those things. Um, just blast them for four damage. Now they play an empty Tidebinder Mage, and that's nice because it's not going to lock down my, my uh, Tajik or my Aurelia. So that's good. And I got the Life Leaking Flyers going. And now it gets to the point where the opponent's just walking all over us, and I really need to find an answer to that gin. I have the two for one myself to double block that gin and get off the board. But then I follow up with Aurelia. But it's still at this point, I feel like it's just over because the opponents just like got so much going for them. They got Ratchet Bomb to destroy my Hawk. Even though I double mentor on the Hawk here, they're able to blow it up with the Ratchet Bomb. And now it's at the point actually where the opponent's two swings with Aurelia from, from dying. And. They are way ahead on cards than me, and they even got Curious Obsession going, so I feel like it's over. But I, they take a swing down to four, and they actually are at the point. I topped out the Chandra to kill the Jin, and they're at the point where they need to find an answer to Aurelia here. They tank, and I think they don't have it, and they don't have it. And we got there against Mono Blue Tempo, and that is as close as it possibly gets. I didn't think we had it, but we did. So we ended up with six total wins, and the deck was a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can build this deck, though, so have your hearts content. If you want to build it yourself, you can do whatever you want. Um, although, I would say that maybe adding a fourth Odric is worth it, because the card is just insane. It's so good. The Swiplay Vindicator was great, especially with Taji, because that's sub sort of like mentor onto this plan, and that can just get there. Gideon was amazing. Um, but, you know, the one thing I would say is main board these deck and stones because we brought them in like every time like every time now another thing i would say is that fervin champion didn't really do much and we ended up signing it out literally every single game um but it's nice that it gives haste i know tashi gives haste too but but he kind of suicides himself on the third turn so I would say try to run something else that can also give haste. I considered Sky Knight Legionnaire because that would, with Odric, give your entire team flying in haste, um, which is pretty good. But I would just say try to find something else that can give haste. That's that's the one thing I would say. And Declaration of Stone definitely main board that thing because we brought it in like every game, and it, it would suck against Control. I, I understand that, but maybe you can run some bigger like Gideons and you know. Try to go more mid rangey with it and go more control y. Go the more removal heavy Lightning Strike Deck and Stone route and just try to run bigger walkers like Gideon, uh, Ally of Zendikar, and something. I think this this uh, Smuggler's Copter, it was cool, but honestly, it just wasn't. I don't think it was meant for this deck. It does get flying to our team and does help find the, the Odric, but it just a lot of the time, since we're kind of a slower aggro deck, we didn't really have the time to crew it and to be more defensive. And so, also, we ended up cutting up veteran motors a lot. So, this package right here, the Fervent Champions and the, the vehicle package, is probably cuttable. And you can just, like, run more stuff. 
But I like the healer saga with Odric. I like the area responder with Odric. This was good. This was good. This is good. This is good. And main board this. And Aurelia was a really great um, win con, um, sub win con to Odric as well. I would definitely keep Aurelia in. She was amazing. And so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the deck. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you did enjoy the video and subscribe if you're new for the Spice Yeast gameplay every other day. Let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. Go check out the social media links are down below as well as well as the link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hope to see some of you guys there. Thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat, and we're going to get on out of here. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.